Yo, what's going on ladies and gentlemen, good to see you again, and today we are talking about Starter Deck 13, the Three Brothers Starter Deck. Having three new leaders added to the game, we're going to have Sabo, Luffy, and Ace. The Ultra Deck as kind of like the Starter Deck 10 was coined, um, having three leaders, but also having 50 cards still in there. A lot of amazing SRs in this. And uh, yeah, chances of getting alternate arts, which is kind of like a new addition to these ultra decks. And I believe that's what raised the MSRP price of this. So initially starter deck 10 was $29.99 if I'm not mistaken. And now we've gone up to $34.99 for this, but you are getting the bonus pack that will end up having three cards from the deck being alternate arts. That can be anything from the commons to uncommons uh, events, as well as the leaders. So a lot of really neat cards in here. Um, I'm super excited to see where this goes. There's a lot of cards in this starter deck that complement um, some already existing decks. Uh, they might not be like top of the meta, but they do have some you know really interesting thoughts. And then we also have the ob obviously they're going to complement the three leaders that come included. So fantastic and to get started with some of the leaders uh, we're going to be having this come out on april 19th we've got sabo ace and luffy <clears throat> all four life leaders and sabo being a red and yellow uh, dawn x1 activate main once per turn you can add the top uh excuse me may add one of your cost three or higher characters with a 7,000 power or higher to the top of your life face up and then you can give one of your characters plus 2,000 until the start of your next turn. Really aggressive, um, allows for, you know, being able to heal after using an already existing card. So we do have a lot of synergy with uh, potentially revolutionary army um, type builds with the red, yellow Sabo. I think that this is maybe not going to be the most powerful leader to start off uh, when starter deck 13 arrives but I do think this is going to only continuously get upgrades and I I'm pretty excited to see where that one goes because Sabo is going to be looking pretty menacing. Uh, I do think that the red yellow combination maybe isn't like the ultimate color combination as a as a whole but a lot of promise uh, for the future of that, especially with Revolutionary Army being kind of like maybe the main idea for that deck list. And then we have the uh, Porcus D Ace, uh, Dawn X2, activate main once per turn. Look at the top five cards of the deck and then add one five cost character card to the top of your life face up. Place the remaining cards at the bottom of the deck. And then at the end of the turn, you gotta send all of your face up cards uh, in your life to your trash. So, <clears throat> Obviously, it, it kind of sounds redundant that you're going to be using this card and then just trashing uh, the card that you put to the top of your deck. But the nice thing is, is there are a lot of uses for having certain cards uh, in the trash. Maybe not so much in this list, uh, So, but there are ways to flip back over those, those cards that you have face up so you can get them back to being face down so then you've just healed one for potentially something like three dawn you know you've used three dawn you get to heal one card uh there's a lot of opportunities that come from ace i think that the blue yellow combination is not too shabby we saw some you know we saw some really good potential from queen but i do think that that kind of was relevant to a lot of the high-end yellow cards the top end yellow cards that were just fantastic and being able to work with queen and healing and uh, going low on cards in hand so that it just kind of worked flawlessly together and uh, yeah but I do I do think that there's a lot of really interesting things that can be done with ace um, I don't believe it's going to be the strongest off the bat but yet again this is one of those things that we're only going to see more and more cards come out that this leader could really shine eventually so really like the idea i think that all of the leader effects 
are just fantastic personally and going into monkey d luffy probably the front runner of what is going to be the most popular if not the most played deck out of starter deck 13 and uh, very interestingly enough before we get into the ability it says per the rules your face up life cards will be sent to the bottom of your deck instead of to your hand it's very relevant because when we go over the leader effect you are putting cards into your life all the time and so uh just not being able to add those to your hand and or trash but having to bottom deck them is actually very important and so uh, i think that this leader is going to be really interesting how people learn to play around it but <clears throat> Uh, Dawn X2, activate main once per turn. Uh, you, you can discard one card from your hand, and then if your life is at zero cards, uh, you can add two five-cost characters from your hand or your trash to your life face up. So it does give you a lot of options on potentially getting uh, some very useful five-cost cards into your life. And now, if you haven't heard about what some of the starter deck 13 cards do, then you might be asking yourself, why would I want them into my life? And we're about to go over that here in just a moment. But the black and yellow combination, I mean, this is, these are the two strongest colors in the game at the moment. So you can only imagine that there's going to be very, very powerful uh, ways to make this leader, you know, just effective into a lot of matchups. And uh, yeah, the reason why you can get those cards into your life and then make some use out of it is because of the three young brothers, like the three younger variants of them. Two cost cards all have 1k counter and 2k power, and they all read the same thing, so I'm just going to read one of them, but you can change the name. It's interchangeable, but uh, you may trash this character, reveal the top card of your life if the card is a five cost either luffy ace or sabo whichever one you're respectively using um, you may play it and if you play it uh, one of your leaders gains plus two thousand until the end of your opponent's turn so the beautiful thing about these these leaders is in conjunction with the three young brothers you actually get to have like a 7k potentially a 9k leader for not only your turn, but your opponent's turn. So imagine trying to attack into a 7k or 9k leader. That is so rough. It is extremely rough. And there's a lot of combinations that work extremely well with these cards. I think that, um, you know, obviously Gecko Moria being one of the bigger ones in, let's see, uh, Black Yellow Luffy. Um, just being able to play that card out and then getting two of these brothers from the trash when they are being trashed from their activate main is incredible. The synergy there is really nice. It still leaves you two dawn left over for using your leader effect. And most of the leaders, uh, going back very quickly are only dawn X1 or dawn X2. So Gecko Moria has a lot of synergy into the, uh, black yellow Luffy list and just using these to get out some of your uh, some of the SRs that are included in Starter Deck 13, but some of the other five cost cards that are of the uh, of the Luffy Sabo Ace variant is incredible. And so uh, to go into those, we do have the three SRs that are included. Um, I believe there's one more actually that we'll get to here in just a moment. But uh, the three SRs of the brothers themselves. We've got Luffy, five cost, Ace, five cost, Sabo, five cost, of course, because otherwise, what would we be doing? It wouldn't really work that well. <laughs> but to start with Luffy, uh, this is a really interesting card. All yellow cards, by the way, um, which makes this a really interesting starter deck, is that everything is yellow and not really anything has much of a trigger in this starter deck. So they're trying to maybe move away from that idea in this starter deck of like, hey, Yellow needs to get value off of triggers. Well, no, we're going for something a little bit different, which I, I really like that idea. Uh, but Luffy being at five cost, 6K power, 1K counter, activate main, the character gains, plus 2000 until the start of your next turn. And then if you have one or more life, you get to draw one card and trash the top of your life. So this might allow you to get to zero when you need to for certain leaders. It also might just get you that card draw that, you know, the card was going to be trashed anyways, uh, per, I believe it's Ace's effect. Um, I believe it's Ace's effect. 
that uh, allows you to trash that, you know, um, any face up cards. So this will say, hey, let's just add this real quick. So Luffy is really synergistic with a lot of the ideas of these starter decks. And it's also extremely powerful. Just gaining plus 2000 until the start of your next turn makes this an 8k swing that your opponent's going to have a very tough time getting rid of. So really like the idea of that card. And uh, I think they did a really good job of kind of designing how some of these work with one another so that it just kind of like plays off of each other. And now we have Ace at uh, 5 cost 7,000 power. On play, if you have two or less life, this character gains Rush. That is pretty good. That is pretty good. And if you think about it, going back to the uh, younger version of Ace, the two cost card just trashing and getting Ace off the top of your life, you, pay, you paid two Dawn for a 7k Rush. That's solid. That is solid. So this card is gonna be very powerful. It's gonna be very aggressive. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of ways that this ace works well in pretty much all three leaders. So no counter on this, obviously being a 7k, but <clears throat> I think that the restriction of having to be at two or less life as well is something that I really wish that they will continue <laughs> for yellow cards, uh, because having to go based off of your opponent's life just seems a little like counterintuitive for how the game is supposed to be played so i like the the idea of ace and just many combinations that are going to come with this and a lot of the aggression so very very cool and um yet again just remembering that ace the younger ace when you trash it you're bringing your leader up to 7k already and then ace is now a 7k rush so you have two 7k swings more than likely for the cost of just two dawn and then attaching Dawn for your leader effects. It, very, very powerful. Um, we do have Sabo as well being a 5 cost 6k. Uh, this is a 1k counter. Um, on play, you can trash the top or bottom card of your life and KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of 5 or less. I think this is extremely, extremely interesting. Um, I don't think that this is one of the SRs that's more... Maybe potentially going to be played more simply because... I, I believe that like the the blocker Sabo, the um, black five cost blocker Sabo is just going to be maybe a little more sought after because of the usefulness of that card. But I think that this has a really good place in the mirror matchup. Um, just being able to KO yet again five cost cards or potentially uh, deal with your opponent that's able to flood the board very easily. Uh, this is really nice. I like this idea of having some removal, but at a cost, obviously having to trash the top or bottom of your life. And uh, yeah, and that's, I mean, these are the SRs for the three brothers coming out in Starter Deck 13. Love this idea, but we still have so many other five cost cards that, you know, are potentially useful using these uh, the younger brothers to bring them out now a few of these cards aren't out yet but i still kind of wanted to go over them just to kind of give the idea of like what we can potentially do so obviously starting in the top left we have monkey d luffy the starter deck one rush card um i mean this card is great so being able to bring this out in the red yellow sabo leader and just having like a 5k body or excuse me a 6k body with a uh, five cost and being able to get through blockers is phenomenal. So Luffy has kind of that synergistic effect that, you know, being the five cost allows him to do that. We also have three OPO seven cards that are coming out, two of which happen to be Luffy, one is Ace. And <clears throat> um, the two in OPO seven uh, Luffy cards, one yellow, one black. Uh, the yellow is probably the more likely card to be played and used, but I did bring up the uh, um, the Luffy from uh, the, excuse me, the five cost black Luffy from OPO7, just because it is something that could be played. I'm just really just trying to give the example of, you know, like what cards uh, do we have? Yeah, but the both of these from OPO7, I believe the yellow one's more than likely just going to be used a little bit more because it can be used in all three of the decks. Whereas uh, the Black Luffy can't so much be used in every single deck, but it, it it's also its effect is like, mm, it's okay. Um, 
But yeah, 1k counter on both of those, and then just being able to place the character in trash, if you have two life or less, KO a four cost or less, and draw one card, that's insane. That's really good, and it synergizes well. So and then we have a five cost rush ace from OPO7 as well, that's gonna be a blocker, and then on play, draw two cards and return two to the top or bottom of the deck. So you can literally just set back up two more cards onto the top of your deck. Uh, the first thing that came to mind for me for this was setting to back up uh, and then, or excuse me, setting to uh, onto your uh, top of the deck that your nine cost Sanji could potentially play into as well. So I think there's some really, really interesting ideas here. OPO7, potentially like blue, yellow, ace. I don't know. Yet again, just first thing that came into mind. I just thought it was really interesting, so I like this idea. Obviously, in the top right, we've got the um, Blocker Sabo. I mean, this is one of the best cards in the game, if not the best blocker in the game, at least. Um, this card is going to wreak havoc in Black Yellow Luffy, so just being able to play that off of the uh, two-cost Sabo is so, so good. I mean, that card is absolutely disgusting if you start to see them through maybe some of your uh searchers and whatnot it's it's very very strong and uh speaking of the searchers you do get a few in the starter deck 13 um one of which i wouldn't really call a searcher but i kind of included it for a reason and i'll get to that being makino here but monkey d garp is a one cost searcher with 1k counter um, and this allows you to look at the top five and you can reveal a Sabo, Ace, or Luffy card with a cost of five or less. Put it to the hand and then the rest to the bottom of the deck. Uh, same thing with the Three Brothers Bond. Allows you to look at the top five of your deck, reveal one five cost or less Sabo, Ace, or Luffy, and then put the rest to the bottom of the deck. So you got great searchers here, one cost cards just being included immediately. I think they're starting to realize like the, the importance of you know, consistency in some of these decks. So without these searchers, it does make it very tough for new lists to become viable if they are using, let's say, uh, <clears throat> maybe like potentially different archetypes. Like for example, the brothers are uh, from Goa Kingdom, uh, the younger version, the two cost cards. So there is no Goa Kingdom searcher, but this allows you to at least search by name, which is really nice. And also just great for the future of <laughs> any multicolor yellow decks, if I'm being honest with you. Just being able to search out Sabo, Ace, or Luffy is extremely powerful because there are a lot of those cards out and there's only gonna be more printed. Those are fan favorite cards. So two great searchers there. We also have Makino, which is the one cost 2K counter. And I put this in here as a searcher. It's not really, but kind of is. Uh, you get to add the top or bottom card of your life to your hand, and then you can look at all of your life cards and return them in any order. That's really good in being able to set up, you know, a potential play with one of the younger brothers, play it onto the field, and then, you know, popping out a five cost card from life. So I think that this card in a way can be sort of a searcher, but it's kind of a unique in its own right. Um, it's very interesting. And I, I like the fact that it's a one cost 2K counter uh, allows you to kind of synergize with a lot of, you know, what these starter decks are looking to do. Uh, we also have the parallels that are gonna be coming out. Um, this image happened to be a little blurrier than I wanted it to be. I was trying to find a good one, but didn't really work out. Um, however, uh, obviously on the left side we have the normal version of the SR Luffy that I was going over earlier. It's a really nice alt or excuse me, uh, super rare art for this card anyways. But every card is going to have a parallel in the starter deck. So I believe that that is going to raise the value of these considerably. Unfortunately, getting your hands on some of these starter decks might be a little difficult because people will be hunting some of these alternate arts, as well as the leaders. I believe the leaders are going to be probably the most popular um, pulls that you can get from this pack. And so there will be a one pack per starter deck that will have three cards in there. So very, very nice, all things considered. And then uh, I believe... Uh, right now, we've been seeing the prices surge for this, but keep your eyes out for your local Walmarts 
as well as talk to your local card shops now, you know, like maybe give them a call, see what's going on and see if there's maybe like any pre-orders left or if they have some first come first serve, if you can get there early enough, just something to keep in mind. But uh, just remember, April 19th release date, targets tend to release maybe like a day or two early. So uh, not always, but sometimes just kind of depends on when they get their product. They don't really know about release dates. They don't really care. The employees are just putting up boxes and they're like, all right, cool. This is up. Have at it. Uh, and then I wanted to go over some potential lists. Uh, these aren't like definitive. I think these are the greatest lists that have ever been created. These are just lists before we have EBO1 being added. Um, so keep that in mind is that we don't have any of the additions from EBO1. This is just for the like two, three weeks that we have starter deck 13 before that comes out. So with Ace, uh, it looks as though they're rocking a you know pretty hefty build that's running all three brothers but a lot of uh, potential like draw power as well running the four of the sanji's pilafs as well as the uh, shanks which is a very interesting card uh, so flipping a card from your life i believe that's face down you can uh, excuse me that's face up you can put it as face down and then if your opponent has seven or more cards in hand you you force them to trash one so interesting card. I think that they're only running it at one of um, just because it is a dead card in hand. But yeah, I think that the ace is going to be a little iffy to start out the meta. But you can see that they're using Hiori. Hiori is going to be a popular card in all of these decks um, because allowing you to set up the top of your life and then using, you know, the brothers to potentially bring out that card that you set up is going to be very powerful. It's also a 2k counter. So Really can't go wrong with that. Um, you you will see a recurring fact of uh, Satori being in a lot of these lists because as much as some lists only allow you to put maybe one of the brothers or something like that towards the top of your life or to, you know, search out one of those, um, Satori is a five cost character and a lot of the leader effects actually just don't denote that it has to be one of the brothers. It just has to be a five cost character. So Satori's really nice in being able to put into your life, set up, and then it, once it uh, is attacked, triggered, you can then trash another five cost that could potentially be useful in you bringing back that card um, for, let's just say, Black, Yellow, Luffy. But you could also get rid of dead cards and then uh, present a 5k body onto the board. So really nice there. And uh, the Yamato also being a 2k counter rush card um, I believe this is to, I believe it's looking at one of your life cards and then, uh, returning your life card in a certain order, if I'm not mistaken. So, <clears throat> but yet again, another five cost card. So you can kind of see the idea here of what they're going for. And then, uh, the Sabo list. I actually really like this. I really like the Sabo list, a revolutionary army, you know, plays here so running a lot of the bello betty emporio ivankov uh, karasu uh, using Lindbergh, inazuma uh, morley you know getting all of those all of those revolutionary archetypes in here and then being able to use uh, sabo's effect that is going to be like putting a character of 7000 power or more to the top of life and then giving something else plus 2000 power it just allows you to use more of these effects over and over and over again because a lot of revolutionary army is reliant on being 7k or higher so i personally think that this is a very interesting sabo list i haven't tested it myself but i really like it uh, i maybe should have said before i went over these lists a lot of these are um at least these first two are two that topped some of the flagships in um, the Eastern meta. So when they came out, these were lists that were doing very well uh, and they were able to, you know, take home some dubs of their own, which I really, I think it's pretty impressive because, uh, you know, with these just coming out, you know, obviously people are trying to get excited and into what they're going to be looking forward to and testing out a bunch of different lists. So really like that. And we also have a Black Yellow Luffy list. Now, this was one that I was actually testing on stream last night. I had a lot of fun with. There's a lot of plays to be done. Um, I don't think I've found the exact ratios just yet, but I am liking the ratios that I have here. They feel good. Uh, everything seems to play very well. So 
I'm happy with it. I'm gonna be interested to see kind of where it goes and how I ended up how I end up tweaking it a little bit. But obviously, having the Makino and the Garp, uh, Makino is really nice when you get down to one life, being able to take that one life and then uh, use leader effect since you'll be at zero to heal to and then go about your turn. So there's really powerful plays. Uh, Garp and the Three Brothers Bond, just being able to search out a lot of your cards is fantastic. Obviously running four of each of the younger brothers. Uh, Hiori to set up maybe some of your early life. Uh, Hiori is maybe just a 2K counter towards the end of the game, but it is uh, pretty solid towards uh, in the very early stages of the game. Because you could get maybe five cost rush ace out or five cost Luffy out early enough into the match that it becomes very, very tough for your opponent to catch back up. And uh, Sabo and Luffy I was running at three just because they don't feel as important as the five cost blocker Sabo as well as the, the five cost rush ace. I think that those cards are just insane. Oh, so important in this match or in this deck. Um, and of course the four costs are four of the Gecko Moria. Gecko Moria is so broken in this deck. It's so it's so unbelievably busted. You could just bring out um, Sabo and Ace, Sabo Luffy, two Sabos, and use leader effect to add two five costs in there, and then you just double blocker up and create a 9k leader. Well, actually an 11k leader that when you pass turn will still be 9k for your opponent to swing into. It is nasty. Like the the ideas here are just not fair. <laughs> not fair one bit. Um, and I do think, you know, obviously the deck has got answers. Uh, the deck does run out of steam, so it feels as though you have to, you have to make a, a pretty solid play into ending game within about five to six turns. Uh, after that, it starts to get a little dicey. So if you're playing against a, a leader that's able to kind of like prolong the match, it does become pretty tough. Um, but I really like the idea of this and I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts. Um, these are just some potential lists that I found and maybe tested myself or I just found that it looks like people had some success with them. But overall, I think Starter Deck 13 is going to be super fun. Super excited to catch the rest of it, uh, you know, as it comes out and just testing the list. But I will catch you guys in the next one. And until then, peace.